my cats are playing now. That's great. You guys couldn't have done this earlier? Hmm? That was my puzzle board. He just knocked pieces everywhere. Hey guys, so it is time for a doozy of a video. I don't think I've ever talked about this many movies in a end of year recap video. These videos always seem to piss people off. I piss a lot of people off with my opinions, but I'm trying in the new year, I'm gonna try to be more unapologetic about my opinions because it's my channel and I'm definitely not for everyone. But I think this one in particular will piss some people off. I don't know. I just feel like I dislike a lot of movies, loved a lot of movies that other people dislike. So, you know, you know how it goes. I don't think my opinions are that controversial, but you tell me. I would love to hear your favorite and least favorite horror movies of 2021 down below, so make sure you leave a comment. But before we get into the ranking of all the movies in 2021, I just want to thank Truebill for sponsoring this video. I'm sure a lot of you are going to be like me in the new year and wanting to take better control of your finances and possibly start a formal savings plan. I've still yet to do that. Also, I'm sure you have savings goals that you want to meet in the new year. Truebill is an all-in-one personal finance app that groups all of your accounts together so you can better track your earnings and savings and create personalized budgets. Ever since I started using Truebill a couple months ago, I've never had more money in my savings account. I think it's because it's easier to track where my money is going when the bills come out, when I can safely transfer money into my savings account, and also when I'm getting my payments in from like sponsors and things like that, which on YouTube can be kind of elusive and hard to track, so Truebill makes it so much easier for me. Also, Truebill bill tracks all of your subscriptions so you don't have to you don't have to write down and remember all of your subscriptions when they come out how much they are Truebill has all of that in a separate category on their app which is so convenient you can also cancel any of your subscriptions through Truebill also another thing that they do there's so many different features of Truebill that I just can't list them all but one of my favorite things is that they can help negotiate lower bills for you from your credit card bills to your internet provider and it keeps track of your credit score so that's really nice too. So you can download Truebill for free if you go to truebill.com slash possessed, or you can go to the link in the description box down below, or you can scan the QR code in the corner of the screen. So to make this video a little extra controversial, I'm not just gonna talk about the best and the worst and group them together. I'm gonna rank all of them too, like I did with my horror books of 2020. So that's gonna also get people a little bit more heated because these are indeed ranked. And we're gonna start with the worst ones. Also another disclaimer, I hate doing these. Uh, I'm I didn't watch every single horror movie from 2021. I don't want to take the fun out of it for me and put myself through movies that I don't want to watch. So it's not going to include every single release. So I know I forgot some. You can tell me in the comments if you want, but I know. I know which ones I forgot. I know which ones I didn't want to watch. Titan, not going to watch it. Sorry. Not, not sorry, actually. It's not my kind of movie. So I'm going to skip the ones that I don't want to watch. I may do this for a living, but that doesn't mean I have to watch every single release that ever comes out. I'm going to go through these kind of quickly. We don't want to be here for two hours. Well, maybe you do. I know a lot of you don't mind the longer videos. This one's going to be long anyway, so let's just get started. Let's start with the worst horror movie that I saw in 2021, which was indeed in theaters, and that was The Unholy. This follows a journalist who visits a small New England town where a girl suddenly gains the power to heal the sick after a supposed visit from the Virgin Mary. He begins to question if her powers are a bit more sinister in nature. Horrific movie. Like, not in a good way. I, I should say horrid movie. Probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It had potential. It's a one and a half out of five. Not ter- well, it is terrible. It's not- I mean, it had potential. <laughs> a lot of the worst movies uh, in this video are just lack of uh, execution with the potential that it had. CG, terrible. Horrible uh, acting story, unoriginal, uninspired. I wasn't for me. I did not like this movie. Next up is a movie that a lot of people seem to like on the internet. I don't know why. Well, I guess I could kind of understand, but that is we need to do something. I also gave this 1.5 out of 5. This follows a family who find themselves trapped in their bathroom after a storm with no sign of rescue with evil lurking just outside. This I wasn't a fan of. Uh, I saw people hyping it up. I liked that it was a single location that kind of gave it a little extra half a star for me, I guess. I like single location movies. It's a great way to... I think single location movies are a great way to do a low budget kind of indie movie and that's what they executed with this one. It, again, this one wasn't as bad as The Unholy even though it's rated the same. I just didn't get anything out of it. The horror was not there for me. I don't like the characters at 
all. Like they just, I didn't understand why they did the what they did. <laughs> I get the father was supposed to be like an abusive father, but his choices did not make sense. Like I didn't, I didn't get that at all. Now the girl that is the main character in this one is also one of the main characters in American Horror Stories. And she's basically the same character, like the exact same character. And I wasn't a huge fan of her in American Horror Stories, not a huge fan of her here. Some people will like this one if you wanna seek it out. Uh, it's just not for me, not my movie. Next up, we have Don't Breathe 2. Uh, I give this a two out of five. This of course follows a disabled veteran who lives with a young girl when she's kidnapped and he must do everything in order to save her. This is given a two out of five and is only better than the other two because of the potential and the actual story. This was actually really well done. They pretty much ignore the first movie entirely. They're very different movies and honestly should have been separate storylines. I wish that they would have gotten rid of him as a character. We don't need him anymore and put in a new disabled person in that role. And then this movie actually would have been pretty decent and I probably would have given it like a three or three and a half. Like if they had a new blind man with the same story and everything else was the same, this would have been 10 times better. But it's the fact that they ignore his whole backstory and the fact that he's garbage, like a piece of human garbage uh, in the first one. And we just kind of ignore that and we're like rooting for him in this one. That's what it was. They kind of address it for like half a second in one of the scenes but it wasn't enough for anything to be redeemed. So yeah, this is just a terrible movie. Next up is a movie that you know already how much I hated and that is Antlers. <laughs> this follows an Oregon teacher who discovers one of her students is harboring a dangerous secret back at home. I've already ranted about this movie endlessly I feel and I will link my review up here. It's probably the most proud I've ever been about a review. It's my favorite review that I've done. I've managed to somehow sway a lot of your opinions on Antlers. <laughs> if you like this movie, that's fine. It's just so disappointing for me. I think a lot of it has to do with the hype that I had around this movie and how excited I was. So part of it is my own fault, but the way it was marketed and the fact it has Guillermo del Toro as a producer on it, yeah, I was excited. I felt safe to be excited, you know? But I was wrong and it was bad. So yeah, two out of five. Next up, another movie pretty much tied with Antlers uh, for how much I hated this movie. You already know what it is. You could just take a guess right now. Malignant. This follows a woman terrorized by a series of violent visions and she soon realizes that these are actually based in reality. This is the most polarizing movie, polarizing horror movie of 2021 in my opinion. People either love this movie, obsessed with it, it's their number one favorite of the year, or they don't get it and they absolutely hate it. And I'm in that second category. Unapologetically, not ashamed, not my movie. Mostly, I don't get the references. I've already done a review on this movie explaining exactly why I personally don't like it, but I can kind of understand why, what people got out of it that I didn't. However, I am jealous because I wanted something out of this movie. I would love to feel how people, like feel how people feel about Malignant about some kind of movie this year. Like the way that they are so passionate about this movie, I want that. I wanna feel that excited. I want something like that. <laughs> I have a lot of FOMO for Malignant and not enjoying it because people are clearly getting something out of it that I didn't, uh, but yeah, two out of five. Next we have Escape Room Tournament of Champions. This is another two out of five. This follows six people who find themselves trapped in another series of escape rooms as they soon realize that they've all survived this before. Again, lost potential. They did not have to do Tournament of Champions with number two in the franchise. If they wanted to do a franchise, why would they then not show us a bunch of people's backstories and then do Survival of the Fittest or whatever? Now, I know that the extended cut slash director's cut has a completely different ending to the one that I saw in theaters. And it was mostly the ending that really ruined this movie for me. So I have yet to seen it, seen it. I've yet to see it, I've yet to track it down. So I don't know. I just don't know if the one on Prime is the right edition or not. So I don't wanna like buy it or rent it and then it'd be the same one that I already saw. Maybe I'll just try to find a clip of the like new ending online. I've heard it's way better, um, but based on the one that I saw in theaters, so disappointing. Escape Room, the first one, is one of my favorite movies. It's a comfort movie. Love that movie. It's, I think, a four and a half out of five for me. Like, it's incredible. Not for everyone, but for me, it's just, I love it. I was so excited about Tournament of Champions, and it 
was probably one of the most disappointing experiences that I had in 2021. Next up, we have Till Death. This movie follows a woman who finds herself handcuffed to her dead husband and must fight to survive his twisted plan. This is the newest Megan Fox movie, and I have to say that I didn't love this movie, like pretty much at all. I had a lot of issues with this. I've talked about this in a previous like monthly recap video, but one of my biggest issues is how they had to keep her pretty. I think she's pretty enough. She can handle some dirt and grime on her face and still be generally attractive, so I don't know why they made it. They have so many continuity errors because they had to keep her pretty and just have like a little bit of blood on her face and only for like a couple scenes. So didn't like the artistic choices there. Uh, this was a pretty average movie though, in my opinion. I gave it two and a half out of five, very in the middle, but definitely one of the worst ones and one that I enjoyed the least out of the ones that are ahead of it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so the last movie we're gonna talk about in the worst category, and then we have middle, and then we have best. So in the worst category, the last movie is The Deep House. This follows two YouTubers who dive in a remote French lake and discover a preserved house at the bottom. They soon realize the horrific crimes that took place there. This really could not keep my interest, and I don't know why. Maybe if I watched it another time, I might enjoy it more, get something else out of it, but I was so bored in this movie. Like, I did not like it. It is very much my kind of movie, so I think that I expected so much more from it, so maybe it's my mistake in doing so. It's a found footage style movie, although I'm pretty sure a lot of the scenes are not filmed found footage style, but it feels continuous. Like, it doesn't feel like a break in filming style it still feels like a found footage movie. It takes place underwater, which I've talked about before. Love water movies, water stories, anything like that. The concept is so cool alone that they discover this preserved house under the lake and there's like bodies and stuff. It's so cool, but so much lost potential with this one and definitely one of the most disappointing movies. I had so much hype for this one and I was so bored. I was expecting so much more, but it ended up being very simplistic and a generic type movie. So I give it two and a half out of five. Now we're gonna talk about middle of the road movies. These are movies that were good. I would rewatch them. I would recommend them, but they definitely do not touch top tier. Like they're not even close to being the best. First up, we have Fear Street. This Netflix trilogy, of course, follows the horror of Shadyside and a group of teens who must work to break the curse that has plagued their town for centuries. This was super hyped up. Uh, I just, it's okay. Like, I think I give it all a three, a uh, three out of five. It's fine. I don't think I actually would go back to rewatch this one. Maybe the second part, but there was just something about it that I didn't like. I didn't really like the acting. Um, the story felt very disjointed at times and just kind of jumped around. It felt like it was marketed for teens, but I did really appreciate the gore. I feel like the gore and the horror elements really saved this for me and why it doesn't have a lower rating. Next up, we have In the Earth. This follows a scientist and a park scout who venture deep into the woods and their adventure becomes a terrifying voyage as the forest around them begins to come to life. Now, In the Earth, I thought was a really cool idea and it was executed how I wanted it to be, if that makes sense. Like, it's what I expected from this movie. However, I felt it was a little try hard. There were some issues that I had with this, some of the visuals in the end. Um, it just tried a little bit too hard to be really weird and edgy, but I love the premise and the buildup. I think it's one of the first pandemic type movies that we have, you know, where they have masks and they talk about the pandemic and things like that. It was entertaining. It was fine. I would recommend it, but it does kind of fall apart a little bit towards the end. Next, we have the newest Wrong Turn movie. This follows a group of friends hiking on the Appalachian Trail despite warnings to avoid the area. They then stumble upon a hidden community who has a deadly way of protecting their secret. This is not a wrong turn movie. This is a wrong turn movie that's not a wrong turn movie. You know what I mean? This does not fit really in the franchise in my opinion. It felt very separated from that because it's not what the other movies have going for it. You know, the enemies or the antagonists are not the same or even close to being the same. So I'm not sure why this had to be a wrong turn movie. It felt like it could have been its own thing, but I liked the originality. Has it kind of been done before? Yeah. It's not the most original, uh, but I did enjoy it. The gore and the deaths and everything like that were super messed up, uh, like from the start. So I liked the horror elements a lot in this. So that's why it's a middle, middle ground horror movie for me. Next, we have The Conjuring Devil Made Me Do It. This follows Ed and Lorraine Warren, who helped defend a man in court who was found stumbling and bloodied accused of murder. He claims innocent by reason of demonic possession. This is probably the most average movie that came out in 2021. It 
was okay and i feel like not one person feels passionate about it either way no one really hates this movie no one really loves this movie it's just such a middle of the road movie and that's not a great place to be i'd almost rather hate a movie like malignant or antlers than feel the way i feel about uh, devil made me do it but technically it was better which is why it's ranked higher um but just it was a whole lot of nothing to me <laughs> it was fine it was just definitely the worst conjuring movie in the franchise and was a huge letdown next we have things heard and seen this follows a woman who moves to a small town outside new york with her husband and begins to suspect their home harbors dark secrets this is a thriller type drama movie it's not very horrific at all but again fine uh not going to be everyone's favorite a, another middle of the road type horror movie not anything spectacular about it nothing really disappointing about it next we have spiral which i know a lot of people don't like I really enjoyed Spiral for what it was and where it fits in the franchise. So this follows a detective working under the shadow of his father as he takes on a case of brutal murders that are similar to the town's grisly past. This is one of my favorite middle movies, which is why it's ranked a lot higher than the other middle movies. Uh, it's good. I really, I mean, I got what I wanted out of Spiral. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. The humor was a little hit or miss for me. Some of the acting was very questionable, but it was what I thought it was going to be. It has this, you know, gore, death scenes, everything like that I think it's fine next we have false positive this follows a couple trying to get pregnant when they discover dr. Hindle but after his techniques work they realize something sinister behind his charm this is another polarizing movie that came out this year I think a lot of people don't like this movie it's an a24 movie it's very artistic uh, very disturbing make sure you look up trigger warnings for this movie if you're sensitive to pregnancy birth children things like that it's not gonna be for everyone but I enjoyed this movie for what it was again middle movie three out of five it's fine I would recommend it to the right people so lastly for the middle movies the average movies of the year if you will is silent night this follows a couple who invite their friends over for Christmas dinner however the world outside is facing impending doom this is the newest holiday Christmas movie if you will and I really enjoyed this one it is just a three it doesn't need any more than that because a lot of the things felt off to me this is definitely more of a drama thriller than a lot of horror elements i would say i actually really liked the subtle horror in this it's kind of an underlaying theme around every conversation and you know what's happening or you slowly realize what's happening and what this party is for and everything like that and that's where the tension and like the disturbingness comes from i do feel like some of the scenes felt like they didn't know what to do with certain plot lines and a lot of the conversations or just scenes of drama would last way too long in my opinion and i would get Get a little bit bored but definitely an unexpected and shocking movie and a good one to round out the year with because i think it's the newest release oh no nightmare alley came out hmm. but a great christmas movie nonetheless all right let's talk about all of the best horror movies that came out in 2021 in my opinion first one in the best movies of 2021 is there's someone inside your house this follows a girl who moves to a new town where her classmates are being targeted by a mass killer intent on revealing all of their deepest secrets this was actually the biggest surprise to me for non-theater horror this is streaming on netflix and i just kind of put it on just because it looked kind of good it's a teen horror which i really love and i was pleasantly surprised i got very hooked into this i was very into it and one of the most enjoyable experiences for horror this year i think it's because i didn't expect anything from it i was expecting really cheesy like indie teen movie um it is a little bit like that but i felt the editing especially really saved this movie and a lot of the acting was really good next we have halloween kills i know i'm putting it in the best i'm sorry i'm not sorry but I mean, I am sorry if you don't agree with me because that sucks. This, of course, is a sequel to Halloween, which came out a couple years ago and which was a sequel to the original, ignoring all other sequels. I am in the minority of enjoying this movie a lot, which maybe that's my malignant. I don't know. <laughs> Love or hate movie. I Actually, a lot of people hate this movie. A lot of people feel that it's not real or true Michael Myers, and I agree. It's very different for the franchise. He does act in ways that is very confusing for Michael. However, it doesn't have to be deep for me. It does not have to be super accurate to the original. Uh, it just has to be a good slasher, and to me, it was. I actually really liked the 
Roles were prized by side characters. I liked the deaths. Every single one of them was so creative and definitely shocked me every single time he killed someone. I think this has the most death scenes in any Halloween movie, so it's gory, and that's exactly what I wanted from this movie. So I can't complain. Next up, we have Paranormal Activity Next of Kin. This follows Margot, who returns to an isolated Amish community, trying to find answers about her mother and long lost relatives. Okay, maybe this one was the biggest non-theater surprise to me because I did expect this one to be a little bit bad, you know, and I guess for some people it was, but because I had that expectation, I think that's why I ended up liking this one a lot. I felt like it was one of the most horrifying ones out of the entire franchise. I think this one scared me the most. It didn't like scare me, scare me, not like going jam, you know, but compared to the other movies in the franchise, besides the second one, that's still to this day is the scariest paranormal activity in my opinion. This one scared me a lot. It was really good. Probably a controversial opinion yet again, uh, but I enjoyed this one. And for me, if it has rewatchability, if I enjoyed it, doesn't have to be perfect. Next, we have VHS 94. This is an anthology movie with multiple short found footage tapes. And in my opinion, is now one of the most disturbing in the franchise. This is the fourth VHS movie in the franchise and has some of my favorite short horror stories, I guess you would say, short little horror movies. I didn't know what to expect with this one. I never do because I typically avoid trailers for the VHS movies and I like to go in without knowing anything or seeing any of the visuals at all because I want to be taken by surprise on what every story is. I like the journey of discovering what the stories are and what the horror elements are and this one blew my mind with some of the visuals. <laughs> it's pretty on par with how well it's done compared to the other VHS movies. They're not perfect movies by any means and they're not my favorites. but I definitely got a lot of enjoyment out of this one. Oh, so far all of the movies have been three and a half out of five, by the way. Another three and a half out of five movie for me was Censor. This follows a British film censor who discovers a disturbing tape that she believes is linked to her sister's disappearance. I've talked about this one a lot already on this channel before, so I'm not gonna go too in depth about why this is fantastic. It's definitely more of a slow burn, less horror. There are some continuity issues. The horror elements aren't great in my opinion, so I would go into this expecting more drama. I don't even want to say thriller because it is pretty much a horror, but we don't have to get too technical with it. It's a little bit slow burn horror. Just expect that. But I think it's such a good release for the year and I'm glad a lot of people are talking about it because it deserves the hype. This next one is not talked about enough. I'm so excited about this movie. I loved it and that is come true. This follows a teenage runaway with no place to sleep. So she signs up for a sleep study that soon becomes a nightmare as they discover the power of dreams. This is another three and a half out of five. Uh, it's not for everyone. A lot of people get very angry at the end of this movie. I thought it was hilarious. Like I laughed when I saw the end of this and not in a bad way. It was so entertaining and clever in my opinion, even though it is a little bit of a cop-out, I didn't hate it. I was obsessed with the nightmare visuals. I was hypnotized by the visuals in this movie. It was so gorgeous, work of art, hands down the score was probably my favorite score of the entire year. There's just so many artistic choices in this movie that are so beautiful, right up my alley loved it. It is a little bit lower because of the story development and the ending. Even though I got entertainment from it, I feel they could have done a better ending to wrap the story up, but that's just me. Okay, let's talk about all the movies that earned a four out of five from me. First up, we have Candyman. This follows an artist who begins researching the legend of Candyman, not knowing it will unravel his sanity and unleash a wave of violence. This, of course, is a direct sequel to the Candyman original and one of my favorites of the year. I thought it was so, so well done. The story was so good. They do show so much in the trailers though, so this is one that could almost be ruined by its trailer, especially because they had so much marketing for it that you could not escape the trailer for this movie. Besides that though, this movie was very well done. I really loved the horror aspects of this. I thought it was pretty good. I do want a little bit more gore and things from it, but overall one of the best of the year. This next movie I'm so excited to talk about because I was not anticipating adding this to the video, but I definitely have to, even though it's more of a drama thriller, and that is The Novice. This follows a college freshman who 
joins the rowing team and will stop at nothing until she's the best. So like I said, this isn't really a horror necessarily, but there are definitely horror elements and I just wanna recommend this to everyone. I think everyone would like this movie, honestly. <laughs> it's so well done, so beautiful, artistic, the tones of the movie, the editing, everything is so good. It was very surprising to me because I went in not really knowing anything except for this main lead is played by Isabel Furman, who this is probably some of her best acting ever. I loved her in this role. It was perfect. I don't know anything about the culture of rowing or that kind of side of college life or anything like sports, anything like that, but I really liked seeing the competitive aspect of it and the way it was executed added to like the thriller and horror elements of this. So if you're gonna watch any that you haven't seen or haven't heard of from this video, definitely watch The Novice. Next up, we have A Quiet Place Part Two. This of course is a sequel to the original that follows the family that must continue on their venture to survive in a quiet world, but soon realize the monsters aren't the only danger. I almost liked this one better than the first one. I would probably, I think the second one has more rewatchability to me than the first one, so I would rewatch the second one over and over again. There's a lot more action in it, so I feel like it's more fast paced and there's more content so I feel like that's what makes it more rewatchable but definitely one of my favorites of the year such a good theater experience I pretty much loved everything about it it gets a four because it's not perfect but it has to be one of my top movies of the year next up we have oxygen this French sci-fi thriller follows a woman who wakes up in a cryogenic chamber with no memory of how she got there or why she's trapped while she's slowly running out of air this one is another surprise for me although based on the premise I knew I'd probably like it because it's spacey it's like a sci-fi but again, pretty much single location movie. Also, again, this is more drama thriller than true horror. Depends how you view space and things like that. If that's horrific to you, then this is a horror. But I had to include it because of some of the horror elements and the thriller aspect of this movie. It's just so good. The tension in this. It's very similar to like Buried. This one's very well acted. I mean, she had to carry that role in the whole movie on her back. And it was phenomenal. So again, if you wanna watch one that you haven't seen that's a little bit more on the thriller side, well, I guess the novices too, but they're very comparable, watch both of them. Okay, now we're finally into the top five horror movies of 2021. Now these are ranked by quality, but not necessarily personal favorite. And I'll tell you which ones are my personal favorite in the end. So in fifth place, we have Old. This is the M. Night Shyamalan movie of the year and follows a family who gets the vacation of their dreams for a price too good to be true and soon finds themselves trapped on a beach where time moves rapidly fast. Old is not for everyone, uh, but it's for me. I love a good M. Night Shyamalan movie, despite him exploiting mental illness consistently in every single one of his movies. He isn't for everyone, but I think he makes some of the most enjoyable thrillers out there, like ever. And Old is no exception to me. I loved this movie so much. I saw it twice in theaters. I bought the DVD as soon as I could. I love this movie and it's not perfect. Some of the acting in Old is a little bit questionable, but generally story-wise, I thought it was really fun. It's a fun movie. He makes fun thrillers. They're not scary, they're not super horrifying, but they're a good time. You know, you just have a lot of suspense. You want to see what happens next, and that to me is what old is. Next up, we have Saint Maud, also four out of five. This follows Maud, a reclusive nurse who devotes her life to Christianity after a trauma, and while taking care of a hospice patient, Amanda, she feels like she must save her soul no matter the cost. This is a very haunting movie, another artistic one done by A24. It is beautiful beautiful, gorgeous. I love the religious imagery. I'm not religious myself, but this is such a fantastic religious horror movie. The last scene will be ingrained in my mind forever. I think some people would have preferred the very last scene to not be in it at all, um, but I'm really happy they included it. It is just such a beautiful movie. So now let's talk about Last Night in Soho, which is also a four out of five for me. This follows aspiring fashion designer who moves to London to pursue her dreams. However, the dreams of the past haunt her and turn her towards obsession. I just talked about this in my November recap video, so I'm not gonna really get into it, but man, am I so mad at myself for thinking this wasn't gonna be good, so I did not see it in theaters. I will never forgive myself for that. <laughs> I saw this twice within 48 hours. I am obsessed with this movie. Like I said, I just talked about it. I mentioned all of these these things. It's fantastic. It's just such a good, easy, 
not super horrifying movie. Like there's something about it that just draws me in and I absolutely love the story. Next up, we're gonna talk about Nightmare Alley, which I finally went and saw. This is a four and a half out of five. This movie is nearly perfect. This is set in the 1940s and follows a man down on his luck who stumbles upon a traveling carnival who joins and uses his new learned language to swindle the elite. So this was my most anticipated movie of the entire year and did not disappoint. Besides the fact that I felt like it was marketed a lot like a horror movie, I think it might even be described as one, and also the fact, you know, it's Guillermo del Toro, he wrote it, he directed it, he produced it, and I feel like despite Guillermo del Toro's previous work, a lot of people do see him as more of a horror creator, so they kind of expected horror out of it, including me. However, it's not a horror movie, which is why I chose not to review it fully on this channel, but despite it not having a lot of horror elements, this was by far far one of the best movies of the entire year, if not the best. It's pretty much tied with first place uh, for me, which I'll get to. Nightmare Alley was just such a wild ride. It felt like three movies in one, it's two and a half hours, so you get so much content, and never once did I feel bored. Not one time, it's a slow burn for sure. I wanted every single second of it. They, I'm so glad they kept all of that in. It's perfection. Now let's talk about the number one movie of the year, in my opinion, The Night House. Now it is also rated four and a half for me out of five. Not one movie got five stars from me. I think the closest would be The Night House and Nightmare Alley, but something about it makes me not wanna give it a five, but those are definitely the closest and the best movies of the year. So The Night House follows a widow who is left alone in the lakeside home her husband built for her, but then she starts seeing disturbing visions and begins to unravel the truth about her husband. Now, the only reason why The Night House comes a little bit ahead of Nightmare Alley, I actually think Nightmare Alley is a little bit better, but The Night House is just a traditional horror movie. It has way more horror elements, so I got a little bit more enjoyment out of it based on that. I would probably turn to this one first to rewatch, especially if I was in the mood for a horror movie, but there's such different experiences that you can't really compare the two, so to me, they're tied but Night House comes a little ahead, like just a little bit, barely any, because of the horror elements and the visuals in this movie. Like I said, the top five are ranked by quality, not by personal favorites. My two personal favorite movies of the year that are very controversial to say, but these are the ones that I'm going to be re-watching over and over again is Old and Night Last Night in Soho. Like, those have to be my top two movies this entire year. I like to differentiate between quality and entertainment. Quality-wise, obviously, The Night House and Nightmare Alley are the best movies of the year. Entertainment-wise, I was way more entertained and had better time watching Last Night in Soho and Old. They're just more fun movies. So it's hard to rank them based on those two different things because at the end of the day, I turn to movies for entertainment, not necessarily for quality. I mean, that doesn't make sense. I want both, obviously. But sometimes you just want a fun movie. You don't want anything too heavy or too serious. And typically, those kinds of movies that are more based in quality are less rewatchable to me. So the ones that I'll rewatch old last night in Soho. There you have all the best and the worst and the middle horror movies of 2021 ranked in my opinion. I would love to hear your ranking or at least your top five horror movies of the year, or your favorite one, your least favorites. I would love to hear all of your opinions down below. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.